Good afternoon, everyone. I'm at Favo, which for those of you in the Orlando area, you know that it is a former hotel located down the street from the Park Lake Presbyterian Church. Don't be like me, get fooled by the actual address, which they show as being on Colonial. I didn't find it that way. I found it by turning on Highland. But just so you know, they have every first Friday of the month and first Saturday of the month, um, artists who open their studios to the public and you can come and see artwork, the likes of which you've not seen. So today I'm gonna be speaking with a friend of mine, Trey, and we're gonna ask him to share with us how he got started doing what he does. So. Hello, how's everyone doing? Um, my name is, uh, Tra uh, well, everybody knows me by Trey. Um, the name that my mother gave me is uh, Mark. Um, and uh, my last name is Harris. And uh, the artist way that I spell Trey is normally TR3. Wow. So is there any significance to the number three? Because um, I'm an 80s baby. Uh, those of you that remember pagers, you could send messages, decoded mes uh, messages in pages, and you would have to decode it. So everyone would use a three as an E. Um, and then also just the whole digital age back then, you also started seeing a combination of that. Um, and I guess that also led to other fascinations that I never knew about, but you know, symbology. So in growing up in Arizona, um, there's symbols all over the place from Native Americans to just other random things. Absolutely. And now 40 some odd years later, like I paint with a lot of different symbols. So. And we are going to talk about yes. some of the art um, that's at Favo as we speak. And so for those of you who won't be able to actually see what I see, um, <laughs> Trey is going to describe for you and we're going to talk about some of the art that I'm currently looking at. But um, how would you say you got started in art? <laughs> um, so... Uh, it's a little funny and a little dark. <laughs> uh, I guess my uh, my um, my first approach with the arts was through school, the regular way, like anybody else. You know, cartoons and um, video games like Nintendo, Duck Hunt, and <laughs> stuff like that. So that was one that was one influence. And because uh, the area where I grew up in, which was um, uh, South Chandler. Um, a lot of uh, different um, Latin communities were there, uh, and you would, you know, occasionally see, you know, Mexican style art. Um, and of course, there was gangs in the area, so you would see like the calligraphy and things like that, which is um, how I got so more um, attracted to the arts, which because due to some of the groups there that always didn't. Uh, do some of the right things, um, some of us uh, got into fights and things like that with them. And that would be me. Um, I got in a fight with two brothers um, for uh, actually knocking over my Michael Jackson CD. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> so, um, well the thing is like, I, had just, I had just did like, I don't know, so many lawns I had cut and a bunch of other different things. I worked really hard to get this money to get the Michael Jackson CD. And, and CDs had just came out. Wow. So this was... Uh, this was like new technology. Yeah, this is like, <laughs> I want to say 80... I think 87. No, no, no. About, about 89. About 89, 88. Somewhere around there. So, you know, to watch that just burst into a million pieces, I whooped it. You know, I, 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 uh, I gave him the business. <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, um, the next day, and where my parents lived, um, if anybody remembers alleyways... Uh, particularly on the West Coast and Midwest, they're way different than compared to here in Florida. Mm -hmm. So um, there was an alleyway with a with the brick wall, and these guys had uh, graffitied my name and did the whole 187 and all that, like, you know, they were going to kill me. So we're coming from school, uh, me and this other guy, and um, as we're getting closer, because um, where the bus drops you off, there's this little, like, way that we would always cut through. So um, you could see it right when you came out of the other side of the fence. And um, I'm looking at my name 
and I didn't look at it as a threat. I looked at it artistically. Oh my goodness. Because the way, because I had never seen my name like that. So I was like, yo, this is hot. <laughs> my boy was like, what's wrong with you? They ain't playing. You know? That's too funny. So that was my first, um, like, other real relationship with the arts. Even though it was dark, it was uh, something positive. Um, to fast forward, I used that uh, without never knowing I'm using something bad and turning into a positive. So a lot of my artwork, whether it's a, a curation um, style or physical, like on the canvas and whatnot, there's always reflections of that. And I didn't really pick up on this though until almost, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. So um, that was the first like seed that was planted way, way, way back then. So that was like my first introduction to the arts. And unfortunately, I never took art seriously. I only did it for like, you know, friends and somebody's birthday, you know, and things like that. It wasn't until I moved to Florida when I actually took art serious. So we're talking 22 years ago. Wow, that's kind of interesting. So yeah. I grew up in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, and we've already discussed that that I'm older than you by about 20 <laughs> years. Hello. Because when I first walked Agent into Favo, I see 1977. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, what's the significance? And what did you say? Um, so it was a birthday present from a friend. And did you mm -hmm. also say that was, was that the year you were born? Yes, that was the year that I was I born. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but growing up in Philadelphia, um, um, there was quote a lot of graffiti which mm -hmm. you know graffiti art is mm -hmm. a thing mm -hmm. i mean that's how one of i won't say the only but one well-known artist um basquiat mm -hmm. he started out as a graffiti yep. artist yep. in um yep. in new york and in mm -hmm. fact i was coming here and i stopped at the dollar tree right up the street on colonial and on the side of the building i was like oh my goodness somebody had created some graffiti Mm. Now, I've been in Central Florida now for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. And when I first moved here, I never saw really? graffiti. Oh. I mean, times have changed. Mm -hmm. Now you can go in some areas and you will find graffiti. And I feel like I'm being transported back to Philly. But Philly sure. is also known as yes, the city graffiti of yeah. graffiti and yeah. murals. Yes. And I'm, I'm pleased to see that in Orlando, yes. there's a lot of, of murals and a lot of the um, public... I don't know what we call those boxes that artists have Electric painted. Electric boxes. There you go. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more in the public purview that art is everywhere. Correct. We're surrounded by art. Correct. Yeah, because the city's been trying to get people to, you know, uh, instead of waking up and, and, and going to a, uh, a Hobby Lobby or something like that or Michael's for your artwork for your office or your home, go to the gallery or go to a place like Fallo, you know, uh, uh, think, think local. I agree. Spend your money locally. Mm -hmm. Make an investment in art, which does mm -hmm. appreciate. Right. Okay, so now, of everything that I am looking at, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what piece do we want to first talk mm -hmm. about? Um, um, hmm. Probably, um, probably a Pintura, Pintura uh, Lives, which is... Um, the, uh, the biggest painting in here is 48 by 48, four feet by four feet. It's a technically a collaboration between two artists, Vicki Wilson, who is also a very well-known artist here in Orlando, and myself. And there's photographs inside of it, as well as um, uh, other mediums of paint. There's, there's a little bit of spray paint, acrylic, um, and whatnot. So Vicki, she did the lavender uh parts that you see in the in the paint dripping down she did all that and then i did the two buildings and what is a spray can holding the people that's on the photographs oh that's so that's interesting there. so these are buildings that are well known to us yes in the, the courthouse yes downtown courthouse and uh what used to be uh bank of america i forgot which i forget what is today. now too yes but yeah that used to be the bank of america building. wow yeah okay and so what was the inspiration for the collaboration? So, pintura, I believe in Spanish, is paint. Yes. And then lives, obviously lives. And this piece is a statement piece because um, it's depicting an area where not just myself, but quite a few artists uh, used to come and uh, come, around, come around, no, 
pronounce that word correctly. What? Uh, uh, collaborate. Collaborate, and, um, okay. Uh, and do other different types of events, not just art related. There were some yoga events and gorilla gardening and things like that. But um, it's gone now. Uh, it's The location where it's at is where our soccer stadium is today. Wow. And there's a, a photograph, in fact, on the painting that shows the demolition of the building getting knocked down. But um, it was located in Paramore. It was originally called the Black Box. Um, I don't know who the original owner is, but the person that used to reside and run it was by the name of uh, uh, Robin Van Arsdale. You might know him better as R.D. Uh. Um, no. Uh, and um, R.V. also came up with um, Warhol and Basquiat and a, and a couple other groups. Um, yeah, Keith Haring. Um, he's known for, I forgot the name of it, but the big, long Mickey Mouse piece. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that. That was not for it. No, no, no. RV had owned the piece from oh, oh, oh. one of those groups oh, that Keith had did it. Yeah. From Keith Haring. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. And he used to have it at his apartment to show everybody. It was a bragging piece. But um, he, he used to run the warehouse and he would allow local artists especially graffiti artists, come there. So um, 2008 through 2011, 2010, there was an event called Pintora Project, which was started by ES and Staz. I uh, forgot their real names, Angel and something. Um, forgot ES's real name. But um, they're very well known um, here in Orlando. Uh, ES actually was on Spike TV for Ink Wars, the uh, tattoo uh, event that was on there. Wow, how cool yeah, is that? a couple that? years back. But um, everything highlights all of us being together. Swanberger's in there from B-Side Artists. Um, quite a few different groups. Um, uh, Social Menace, which was a local t-shirt company. Um, some artists that uh, are no longer here with us um, are also featured in there. And then, very well-known graffiti artists from like the late 60s, early 70s, which was the beginning days. People like Coke 2, uh, T-Kid, um, Congo. Um, these were very legend, uh, legendary, uh, well-known graffiti artists. And that's interesting when you made the connection between mm -hmm. artists then becoming tattoo artists because mm -hmm. there have been a couple of mm -hmm. artists that I've spoken to for my podcast yeah. who have branched out into... Right. Where they go back and forth. Yeah. So sometimes what if, it's, it's slow in the market. Yeah. Right? So what? Do, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's really kind of cool because I mean, if you're mm -hmm. going to an artist to get a tat, then nine times out of ten, it's like correct an original piece of art. Correct. That's on your right, body. Body right. art. Exactly. Right. A lot of people refer to it as a, a, walk, a moving moving canvas, walking canvas, or something like that nowadays. Mm -hmm. See. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, we're seeking to educate. We're learning all yes. kinds of good and interesting things, which is the purpose of being exposed to art, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't matter, you know, what type of art, as they say, art is like beauty in the eyes of the beholder. Correct. But, Correct. Um, oh, and the last part, because uh, you did ask me the question. Um, so, bottom bottom line, the main, the main, no, I think that um, was, oh, that was, that was yours. Okay. <laughs> um, so, the main statement that it's saying um no matter what laws you pass which is why the courthouse the, the courthouse is there mm -hmm. and no matter um who you're in business with to get those laws passed like the bankers and whatnot the arts will always remain here so that's why the spray can is in the forefront and wow. the other two buildings are in the back that's kind of cool yeah thank you <laughs> so i mean people those of you that are in the central florida orlando area if you've not ever been to Fabo, please come and check it out and what is the room number of the studio that we're currently in? Room number 244, it's upstairs. And um, the uh, gallery is uh, Art for All Spaces, and it's ran by Brad Biggs. Okay, so now let's talk about the current exhibit, which is almost over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was able to come today because normally this would only be open the first right. Friday and Saturday. But, right. you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it pays to know people that know people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, what did you call this show? And talk um, to me a little bit about the inspiration for, for what caused you to do what I'm currently looking at. Sure. Um, so, um, it's, it's, a, it's basically a pop-up exhibit. I called it an urban art pop-up exhibit because it's mostly urban art. And I wanted to just kind of pay homage to uh, people who I've worked with, got me into the arts, um, 
you know, so, so that's a short version. Um, and uh, we were lucky enough to do this because there was another artist that was actually supposed to be here for September, and that artist um, wasn't able to follow through. So Brad asked me um, to uh, put something together real quick. So this is, this is what I have. And um, some pieces are done by myself. Some um, are done by uh, other artists. Some are from other exhibits. We even have some young artists. Um, uh, well, she's not so young anymore. But um, Zoe, uh, which I think you may have met at Bronze Kingdom. Yeah. Um, Zoe, I think when she did that piece, she was around 17, 16 years old. Wow, I love the color. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about this color yep, piece yep, right here? Yep, yep. Like the, fluorescent the, color. Yes. I love it. Yes. I mean, we're talking like turquoise and blue and pinks and yellows and oranges. Uh, do they glow in the dark? Uh, I don't no, that's a great question. I don't think so, though. It would be cool if you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Really I'm sure cool. she's probably working. On, Zoe, I don't. If you haven't kept up with her, mm -hmm. the girl is on fire right now. She has done um, several people's wedding dresses. <gasps> she's done designed them or decorated her. I think a little bit of both. Wow. She's done. She's working on her fifth or fourth children's book. Um, she's taught classes at 14. Wow. Um like art classes um, and a slew of other different things um, but very very talented she's actually going to be here in March of next year so yeah she's going to be here in uh, uh, March of uh, next year so uh, be on the Zoe Hunter is her name I think uh, Zoe Creates I think is her uh, schedule, schedule. schedule. Yeah. okay those whispers <laughs> that you heard were from none other than Brad Dix himself okay <laughs> He just snuck out. It's all good. All right. So um, yes. this is interesting. This reminds oh. me of Monopoly, but I think it's captioned it's a little... from the Game of Life exhibit. Y yes. Yes. Pills and potions. Yeah. So that is a Haitian artist, uh, kind of new to Orlando um, and has some absolutely amazing uh, conceptual art, but it's also in the ballpark of activism. Oh. Because uh, well, first his his name is um, Molière de Manche. Okay. Uh, hope, um, hopefully, I didn't butcher that. Uh, but he's a he's, like I said, he's an Asian artist here in, in Orlando, and he was originally um, in prison. Uh, I don't remember what for, but uh, he was in prison for a couple of years. And due to the uh, treatment that he went through in prison, um, as well as the other things that he saw other inmates go through. He's became an activist for that. Wow. So um, he has your kind of your typical style gel art, which is normally in black and white, normally done with a pencil, those that you know. In some cases, it's very uh, hard to get color, or they can't um, have color because of how they access the color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so this piece here, yes, it's called Pills and Potions, and um, I can just read this really quick. Um, it's... Um, it's a chapter from his book that says it takes a criminal to know one. It's dedicated to his experience at Cross City Correctional Institution, which I believe is here. In, I think it's here in Florida. Um, the artwork itself is a riddle that he's composed, meant to decode as each chapter is read, making for a more engaging read. This is one of his personal favorites. Wow. I'm going to take a photo mm -hmm. of some of the art so when I... Um, on my Facebook and Instagram pages so you'll be able to see some of the art that I'm looking at. And so this piece right here. In the middle? In the middle. Okay. Do you know do you know do you do you know the artist? You probably do. Let me get up close and let's see. It's two people, but Oh. But most you, people You you and who is Freeman? Herbert Freeman. Very uh, well-known artist in the downtown Orlando area. Um, uh, he's a, a, a elder brother. Um, we haven't seen him in a couple years though, but he was in downtown for a very, very long time. Um, he was once homeless and he got on to some type of a program and uh, he got an apartment and got some other things and he got cleaned up. He was still coming downtown to sell an art, but I haven't seen, the, seen him in a couple years. But this is his uh, his uh, trademark style that most people know uh, the circles it's normally a woman or a male which is usually either his uh, brother or his sister it's, it's usually somebody in his family wow so and he's known to paint on anything normally it's always with the sharpie 
and it's on some random object. Normally, it's uh, what do you call this? Um, it's normally on drywall. Um. Believe it or not, <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but How you cool would normally see random broken chunks of drywall looking like Moses's tablets, <laughs> 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 basically. And he and Primo was known to draw on them. So, um, but uh, yeah. So in this case, this one he drew in the background. I drew in the background and on top. This is also glass, so it's also on top of the glass. So um, my patterns, which were influenced technically by graffiti, but since I could never do the traditional graffiti where it's got you know all the shading and yeah. that type, I yeah. could only write it out like if somebody's doing like a like calligraphy a regular, or something. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my version of graffiti. So some stuff you can make out, like that's my version of an A, my version of a G, okay? And then there's other stuff where it's kind of like gumbo where you'll see um, what looks like maybe Arabic. And I was just going to say, because this reminds me of like Arabic. Yeah. Um, and some of it is what I would say mm -hmm. some Egyptology kind of references mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Like that looks like the eye of Horus right mm -hmm. there, maybe. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on here. Yeah. yeah, this was one of the ways I would sign it. So this is my version of the number three, as well as the number, uh, as a well as the letter T. T. That is really cool. Together. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, and then I do this in toothpick. What? Which I think you. Oh, you didn't know that. Yeah. No. So the the bulk of my art is always done with the toothpick. So. Yeah. You basically paint with I, a toothpick. I, yeah. I don't know why. Um, and so how long does that take? Um, it varies. It varies. Sometimes not as long. Um, this piece... This was done with the toothpick too? No, no. That's a, Oh, that's Freeman. That's Freeman. I see Herbert yeah. Freeman. That's yeah. his signature. Yes, correct. Right, I correct. see. That's so his that signature. So that was with a Sharpie. Oh, wow. Yeah. A toothpick. Yes. Wow. Just goes to show you <laughs> what we already know about the creativity of we the people. And speaking of the people... <laughs> that also paint with a stick would be actually the aborigines now i never wow. knew that uh caucasian guy pointed that out he was like he was like oh you paint with a toothpick he was like you know some of your relatives uh and i'm like okay <laughs> whatever but see yeah. that's that's the whole point is that we're all connected yeah. we're all connected and right. sometimes we do things and have no conscious memory of it but i like to think it's part of our dna yes and it, it came is. out it is Okay, yes, yes. and so I mean, mm -hmm. we're gonna talk ever so briefly because you have done a lot. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna talk about uh, ever so briefly, like how, <laughs> yeah, you know, we can do more I than do one part, episode, part <laughs> yeah, like how you started like curating art, okay. how you started doing what you were doing. I don't even well, that was curation when you were. Working, I think I met you. Was it at City Arts? I met you at City Arts, but I at that time I was already maybe I don't know, maybe six years already into curation. Exactly. Center, okay, so. so talk to me. Yeah. How did you first get started um, in curation? So and explain to those who may not know sure. what that is. What is art curation? Um, so art curation is um, most people when they see the word curate, I think they associate it with food. Um, I think particularly a ham, because that's where I first saw the uh, Like ham being <laughs> cured? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, it's kind of almost the same way. Like, you know, you want to season the meat and, and, and get it prepared and whatnot, uh, not only to taste good, but also to look good. So setting up art exhibits are, are kind of very similar, uh, regardless of the genre. Uh, you know, urban, contemporary, sculpture, photography. Um, you're, 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 you're putting that all together and basically making it presentable. Sometimes some things are placed in uh, certain locations where another piece may not be. Um, in other words, like um, people that are coming through the front door, you obviously want to probably have the best piece in their, in their peripheral, okay. <laughs> basically. Um, uh, and it's not to downgrade any other artists in the show or anything like that, but it's just to kind of get the ball run, rolling. So generally, you would put the, the piece that you think has the most visual impact right, would be right. as soon as you come in. Correct. To hold people's interest. They'd be like, oh, what we got going on there? Exactly. So they would come on in and say, oh, yeah, let me check this out. Correct. Okay, Correct. see, I learned something. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're supposed to learn something yeah. new every day. Yes, yes. I've learned quite a bit since I've been sitting here because... Oh. Brad was going through some of his crystals, and I Correct. was getting an education about that. Correct, yeah, likewise, yeah. yeah. So, again, yeah. people, 
you know, normally when Brad does have an artist um, at his studio, there are crystals here which you can purchase. Mm -hmm. And if you're lucky enough for him to be here, you will also get what? So an the education. history in the background, yes. Right, correct. which is fascinating. Right. Yes. Okay, so curating. Oh, and so, uh, so how I started um, was at Culture Mart. Um, Culture Mart was a consignment shop. Uh, that was that was owned by Swanberger. Um, uh, his real name is um, Asan Brooks. Unfortunately, he just left us. He moved to Seattle uh, not too long ago. Um, but Swanberger um, from Soliloquist to Sound, most people know him also by by uh, his his music band. Um, he had a shop over by the courthouse, and when I met him, I think he was already there for like eight or nine years. Um, and it was a consignment shop that had everything local, so local shirts, music handbags, a little bit of everything. So that was my first like go around in the arts. That was 2000. Um, well, we met Swam and them technically in 2006. 2006. Dang. No, 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 no. Let me take that back. I met, I met, I met Swam's music first okay. before I met him. Okay. In 2004 at a place called Stardust, uh, which is a little video cafe over here in Winter Park. Um, and then I met uh, his former wife, Alexandra, because she, um, well, they both did poetry, but she was out a little bit more than he was. And I met her um, a little bit later. Uh, uh, Chris Rodriguez, known as Tobar, who's one of his, uh, one of his pieces of arts here, the geisha. Um, that was my former roommate. And Tobar got me into believing that I could live off of art full time. <laughs> so um, this is also, that's what I was saying, it's a little bit of a complex story. Um, so he got me involved and, um, cause at that time I only had 45 minutes a month I could do anything with art. Cause all my jobs were always time consuming. Wow. So one thing led to another and here we are 40 some years later. Um, and uh, we did our, our first art show. Well, we did our first art show at our apartment. It was great, but we, after we did that, we didn't really want anybody in our apartment. I guess not. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, personal space. Exactly. So we were like, hey, let's let's uh, let's take this somewhere else. And then he got me all hyped up. And then he moved back to Chicago because he's originally from Chicago. He moved back to Chicago. And I'm like, hey, like, <laughs> left me hanging. What's right. up? Right. So um, I started hitting all the little poetry scenes. Uh, Dandelion Cafe was probably uh, the most popular one, ran by Sean Welcome back then. You might probably heard Sean. Um, and I saw Alex, um, Swanberg's former wife. We started talking about art shows and things like that. She was like, well, hey, we got a shop in downtown. And we were like, oh, okay. So every time we would go to the shop, they weren't there because this is the time that they had just got signed to Epitaph Records. And they went on tour with Sage Francis, another well-known um, hip-hop artist um, in the underground scene. Um, so they weren't there. So I would actually go to Avalon, which was DMAC back then, which wow. is the Digital Media Arts Center ran by UCF, uh, which is where City Arts is today. Um, and we would wait for them um, then, because they would always come to the shop like super late. So um, this is how I also started to learn a little bit of the art scene. So we finally did our show, which was 2007, uh, November of 2007. And after we did our first art show, and I also, <laughs> I was bringing people back then, because I had moved from Jacksonville. Okay. Um, I lived in Jacksonville first in 2000, came to Orlando in 2003 to go to Full Sail. So um, the other way I got involved in the arts is also because of my neighbor in Jacksonville. I never knew there was a Full Sail connection. Yeah. Yeah, because cool my that? background is mostly music. I know more about music than I do art, but art pays the bills. Okay, so when you were doing <laughs> music, what were you doing in music? This was neighborhood apartment stuff. Whatever. So see, you I know. just learned something else new about you. See, you just gotta draw the information out, people. Yeah, there, there, yeah, there, there is a lot. I, I just don't, I don't really. Uh, it's not that I don't want to talk about it. I rarely ever, even get a chance to talk about it because I'm trying to pay a bill. I know. So and that's the condition that of the most people in America. Yeah, is we're so busy trying to make those Benjamins just to yeah. stay afloat. Yes. So what would you say one of the main differences, artistically, if any? between Jacksonville and Orlando? Today, I don't know that much, but from what I'm hearing, it's a lot more progressive. 
Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville versus Orlando. Wow. Um, I know there are there are festivals that seem to have a different type of approach where um, it encompasses more. I don't know, just the community and other elements that goes that goes with it. Ah, uh, so they rely more out on here, community artists. You're saying that's what it of, seems like, and that's and then out be. here you have that, but you don't. You, but it seems like you only have that seasonal, and you only have it in one or two pockets. Jacksonville seems like almost the entire area. Wow. So at least when I get the notifications in my email. Um, so, so what do you think? we can do here in Orlando to try to get to that level because I mean let's face it there's a lot to, of we talent have to support. in Orlando there really yes. is I mean you know a lot of my friends are artists I know a lot of artists their work is spectacular and I'm like what the H is going on right right we have to support um in in every way not just with dollars but even also your time um you have no idea how much it might mean to a person um, in persons that you just showing up to their event, even if it's only for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Exactly. You know, um, we have to realize with everything going on today, regardless of what, you know, people want to say, but there is a, a rubbing out of, um, you know, doing for self and, and, you know, um, and, and, and what, uh, you know, entails that, uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of the groups in arts, may it be graphic design, may it be uh, on canvas, uh, curation, whatever, that can create and spark and bridge a lot of um, issues that are that should not be going on right now. And it's getting kind of rubbed out uh, in every area, not just the inner city, uh, everywhere. Um, and people don't realize like you've got we we've we've got to come, put some of our differences away. Uh, support it with your time as well as dollars um, recommendations especially you know um, <laughs> uh, I've lived off of recommendations my entire all my careers because um, my background is also sales and you can't do sales without recommendations I don't care what anybody tells you and that's very true and I'm yeah. very fortunate that I know mm -hmm. so many people who are artists and yeah. I try when I'm aware of stuff going on mm -hmm. to show up and or share that information which is why right. people think I always know what's going on because I just reach out sure. to people I know and they say hey do you know this is going on I'm like no right. I didn't but thank you and I'm right. going to share and right. I agree with you so you know for me art and music can also be political has been yeah. political yes because a lot of times that's why sometimes it's getting rubbed up yeah that's true because we expose you <laughs> right but, but, the, and me, yeah. but that's the right. point <laughs> right, I mean right. that's the point you know mm -hmm. and if people don't take the time to come and see right. in your face or or you know because I do art quilts and in my art quilts mm -hmm. I use a lot of symbols mm -hmm. from different cultures based on countries I've traveled to right and I'm always always willing to talk to somebody yes. if they don't know what the symbol means and I usually try to break it down because Art is also supposed to educate. Music mm -hmm. is supposed to educate. Correct. Yeah. We're here, hopefully, to learn something it, new it's, every day. It's totally educating on any level, whether it's on a small level or, or a big level. Um, the short, short, short version, what, what I've noticed, whether you go through indigenous groups today, yesterday, or ancient times, the arts seems like maybe the first school. And I only say it that way because um, I've tried to go to school, which I have. Um, it's just it's never worked out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you've been doing school of life, okay? Yes, yes. And and this is what I mean. The, the arts prepares you for life, I think, a little bit better than what school could ever do. And you know, like breaking fear bubbles, whether it's uh, communication, um, you know, breaking your comfort zone, uh, learning how to sell, uh, whatever your product is, as well as yourself. You know, it 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 uh it, it can intertwine through so many different things in a shorter amount of time versus you spending whatever six years eight years at school okay this you is know. not to disparage those of us who have put in right 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 i'm not knocking you go and, to and school and i know right. you know and right. i know that but i'm just i just want people to know there's more than one way to get yes. to a destination Correct. and sometimes Correct. you can be lucky enough to blend the two together to yes. blend the technical yes. you know knowledge you learn in a school environment with street knowledge yes. or, or common sense which we know common sense is not really common anymore <laughs> right but um right. you know the world is this laboratory yes yes and it's your blank canvas exactly and yeah. it's up to you 
to decide, yeah. you know, how you yeah. want to move forward and, and, and do oh, what you do. And to add to that, and to uh, finish answering your question, the way I got into curation was due to me uh, being at Culture Mart and having all these conversations with regular people as well as artists. I was like, oh, wow. I was like, you know what? This is what I fully want to want to do. So um, everybody knows Swanberger. Brad was one of them. Brad comes strolling in at like, I don't know, like 7 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night, downtown Orlando. And um, I don't know what Swam and I were doing, but Brad, uh, Swam was uh, like, hey, Trey, actually, this is a person who you should meet. And um, he was basically, you know, <laughs> handing me off to Brad, like, hey, show him how to curate because I ain't got time for this. <laughs> so, so that's how you met Brad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, was, was at Culture Mart. And because Swamberger was, um, like I said, they had just got signed, so they were in and out of town, uh, going on tours and things like that. It's not, it's not that he didn't want to show me, but, um, you know. So uh, that's how I got started. And, uh, and, when, and the sad part, uh, again, I hate to go dark and gloom, but I, uh, when I finally committed to wanting to be a full-time artist, I lost everything. Lost the car, lost the apartment, lost the girl. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, um, and I was crashing at Culture Mart. Um, I wasn't homeless, but I was crashing there. So, uh, and again, because everybody knew Swam and Lemus, um, because Lemus used to also uh, be in and out of the drain. Lemus, those of you who don't know the name, um, responsible for a lot of the lines around Orlando. But, um, so I met uh, Lemus and a few other artists, and we all started hanging out. And this is actually also the beginning stages of other things, like B-side artists, which uh, there's a sticker on the um, on the painting there. This is B side. Um, so a lot of different uh, other elements on being in the arts and the business of arts and uh, things like that came from me just being at Culture Mart, being in this one little tiny location. Uh, that's how I met Tim. Also, because um, wow. I also met the Conscious Team. Um, a lot of them uh, because uh, so to back it up, Culture Mart also was a little bit of a hub of other um collaborations uh a lot of the jazz groups and the poet and the poetry uh, the, the poetry well uh, the slam poetry ah all right which and, is a little different yeah it's than, a little bit different right yeah for those that don't know how would you briefly oh, describe slam oh poetry gosh, you don't do that okay then don't do it okay <laughs> it's like freestyling um mm. Yes, it's 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 a little bit of freestyle and probably also elements again of of of, of education, not okay. so much of the stuff that you hear today. Again, right. I'm not knocking anybody. I know that. I know style, that. We're just but, putting stuff out there, which is yeah. We're just touching on some key points in your journey. Yes. That's all, and yes. trying for people who may be unfamiliar with the terminology. Yes. To shed a little bit of light. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So all of those groups were getting together back in that. Back in that little time period, so okay. 2008, 2010 period, um, and it's a trip to see them now. You know, a lot of them are, are grown grown little humans now. Some of them yeah. <laughs> were, you know, still in middle school in That's a couple cases. Funny. You know, yeah, wow, yeah. So, so we know there was music, there was art. You're mm-hmm. an artist. There's curation. Yes. How would you say? Because you also have like all these other things that you do. Mm-hmm. which may be related to art or curation, but mm-hmm. like, um, um, how do I want to call it? Like African artifacts. Yeah, so... Or what do you want to call started, that? That um, African, African, African culture. African culture, yeah. African art. Well, I like to also say global culture. Okay, that's fine. Because yeah. we're some global people. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. Um, and this even goes back to my Arizona days. Um, and... Uh, Although I was born in Chicago, I don't know Chicago. Okay, so you never really lived in Chicago. No, okay. I was there until I was about, I think, three or two years yeah, old. Yeah, you wouldn't have known. No, no. But, so, have you had but I'm sure some of it is in your DNA. And it came out yes, in different yes. time periods. Because growing up, if you had grown up in Chicago, oh, an urban city, which right is now. a little <laughs> different than being in yeah. the West, Colorado, yeah. because I've been to Colorado. I love Colorado. Yeah. And for people who haven't had experiences of traveling mm-hmm. you know have grown up in one place you really right. need to get out yes you have to. and and check out you another part of the the usa or you the world to. that you because it's a different sensibility to. and, and gra- mentality and granted it's great there's the internet 
you know, and there's all these documentaries and podcasters, that's awesome. So, you know, those that are on limited budgets, limited time and whatnot. But if you can, like, you know, even if it's only for a day or whatever, a weekend, go. I just agree. go, just go, just go. You know, if you got to crash in your car and bathe in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a McDonald's in restaurant a, uh, or whatever or a travel station, what are you saying? Car the truck driving. Uh, oh, those, those stops. Those, yeah, yeah, yeah. They usually have, have, have showers. showers and stuff. You yeah, know, that's go true. in there. That's you true. know, and just do it. You'll be amazed uh, how much um, that can impact your life. So you know, um, it's one thing I regret. Um, you know, I had plenty of opportunities to travel and I had not. So you know what. But, yeah. There's still we'll time. There. You will get there. Oh, yeah. And I mean, let's face it, through your work, through mm-hmm. art, and through the collaboration yes. with people who come from all over the world who are global, yes. you get that. Yes. And that to me is another salient thing about art is the collaboration with people yes. who come from different Correct. cultures and it's, it's, it's you know, Correct. it comes out in their art. Correct. Or in the association through them, how Correct. they how they walk, how they talk, how they dress, how yes. they interact. Yes. The foods they eat. Yes. I mean it all plays a role. It does. Absolutely. It absolutely does. Absolutely. So of all the things that you do Oh, what'd you ask? How did I we were, African? Yeah, we were asking about how you how got started um, in doing what I'm gonna call do we want to call that curation of global it art? It's, 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 it's all a part, part of curation. It. Oh, yeah. Because oh, okay. yeah. even, um, even, even if you don't physically get to present it in public, you okay. still have to learn about it because you might get asked that question. Hey, you know, what does this mean here? Okay. Because usually when the person is also asking you, they probably, I don't want to say they're testing you, but, you know, they, they probably know something about And they're just, the but area. they are testing you to see, do you know your A from your E? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 Okay, so then so you started that's, doing that. That's, I, that's a little difficult as far as like the beginning, but um, I would say the first door that got uh, thrown open would be probably when one of my teachers asked me, um, or when she was making the comment that people in the world don't get along with one another because of their skin tone. And at that time, I was young, and I was in Arizona, okay? Uh, Arizona's a different animal uh, back in the 80s. And we look, were looking at her like, you don't know what you're talking about because all of us were just hanging out at such and such's house, you know. Um, so that basically opened the first door of like curiosity is my point. So um, and at that time and also due to the church that uh, my parents were involved in, um, we had a lot of first timers that came out of there. Uh, Koi Payne, uh, who was the first, I believe, black mayor of uh of uh chandler arizona um or phoenix um i don't know how the mayor thing works but he was Mm -hmm. he was one of the first ones and we had a couple other people that came out of our uh out of our church i don't remember the name of it but um uh if you go back and watch the movie wait to exhale the part where uh whitney houston is um talking to angela bass uh, not not whitney houston um the other sister forgot her name but um the part where angela bass is talking to her girlfriend on the ferris wheel that's chandler and wow. that's uh, that's uh, they're in they're in back of the the Chandler Library. Our church was right in back of that. How cool is yeah, that? Yeah, put yeah. y'all on the map. If you weren't <laughs> yes. already on the map. <laughs> yes. How cool yes. is that? What a connection! I love yeah. that movie. So that might have been the first stages, and then of course a lot of it I would say would have came through old school hip hop. Um, people like X Clan, uh, who uh, Tony Taylor, who's one of the artists that I have shown in here, uh, she did. Uh, one of uh, two of their album covers um and they're out of um well she's out of mount vernon new york i don't know where x clan is originally from but they're out of new york but um that would have probably been the first stage because this was back when hip-hop videos were showing uh you know the medallions and what we now know as uh some uh, shanti uh medallions but i never knew any of these names everyone was just saying we came from kings and queens but nobody right. would ever give any the names. details because yeah. nobody knew right and if you did know you probably it probably wasn't on your radar because um swam and i used to argue about this um uh if you didn't know the john henry clarks and uh the francis crest well scenes if back you had then, not been exposed to african right and i've watched history. plenty videos where they were very informative and i don't remember any of the artists mentioning any of these scholars um, if there was, it would have probably been Karis one, um, and even then, it may still not have. 
you know. And that's and interesting because when you talked about artists doing album covers, I mean, yeah. I remember because I still have albums yeah. and a turntable, yeah. and I listen regularly. Yeah. So groups like Earth, Wind, and Fire, yes, some heavy. of their albums, yep. I mean, people, heavy when you look at it now and you have a greater understanding Correct. of what they were trying to communicate Correct. to the masses, and we had Correct. no clue. Correct. The Egyptology, the symbols, I mean, mind Correct. blown. Yes, and that's I mean, what I mean by also another form of rubbing out. You know, um, even when you look at artists' uh, products that they're coming out with, stuff is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. You know, um, you know, there was a day where, like, I would look forward to just getting the whole album. It was only two songs. So what? Like, you look forward to the album cover, you right, know? Right, because that was yeah, art. I right, mean, right, right. I mean, right. look, Ernie Barnes. Yes, Good times. Yeah. I mean, that piece of art just yeah. sold for an astronomical yeah. sum of money. I don't yeah, even remember. Ago, like something. millions yeah. of dollars. Right. And I mean, who of us has not seen that? Right. Correct. And that was a part of, of our culture growing up. Correct. Correct. And the Eddie Barnes uh, particular style, the contorted style. Yes. Was also uh, an influence on graffiti artists' characters. See? So Swanberger is actually one of those groups, um, and I mean there's a slew of others, but that he he always references um, the uh, contortedness in his pieces due to Eddie Barnes. Wow. Yeah. I mm-hmm. hope you all are understanding there are all these yeah. connections that exist yeah. between oh, yeah. life as we know it, just everyday existing, yep. Yep. and art and music and politics. It's all connected. Yep. Absolutely. We're surrounded by art. Absolutely. You know, everything has has its roots in art, which mm-hmm. for me, everything begins where the continent of Africa. Yes. But it's all good. Yep. It's all good. <laughs> so this painting here in the corner. On the canvas? On the canvas. Oh, yes. Miss Poetry Jackson. In fact, I'm trying to see. No, that's on canvas. But this is yes, this not. Yes, like raw, raw. Raw, canvas. right. It's not stretched or Correct. anything. Yes. Okay. This is called doorways yeah so this is from an exhibit that i did at city arts factory called doorways and it's done by an artist by the name of poetry jackson uh she is originally from virginia don't quote me but she's somewhere up there i think i think it is va Mm -hmm. and she went on a tour um and she did a uh, like a little. She was doing like these little pop up events in random places, and Orlando was on her stop. And I met her through Bev, uh, Bev the Creatures, who oh. also left us now in um, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, Georgia. Um, <laughs> uh, and they both collaborated and did a sh- and did a piece of work together at my show Doorways. Their collaboration was a um, it was a, a skirt that opened up like a door. How cool is yeah, that? Yeah, it was hot. It was awesome. And for those of you that don't know Bev, she is like a wonderful seamstress, but yes. she does steel drums. I mean, yes. sister does a lot. Yes. Okay. And this is the painting that Poetry uh, did for the event. So, and um, it's on raw canvas, and it's a series of different doorways. And I think this might be a play on certain seasons as well yeah because as, it does look seasonal right like i see maybe spring and summer maybe fall yes and i think also on maybe even um you know uh, well uh, i see the moon and the and sun like that yeah yeah and then we have the clouds and, and so there's right. a lot going on here too the stars a bunch of stuff going on right okay right so um that's what's going on that it's a uh, acrylic and um yeah so the last mm-hmm. not last last but mm-hmm. i love these masks oh yes yeah, what they want to see <laughs> are they all called what they want to uh, see no they all got different different um yeah that one is titles. what they want to see this one is the darkness within and then this one over here is broken mirrors broken mirrors wow and it's a play um so it's a couple of things. So it's a it's a daughter and mother um, collaboration. The mother did all the masks. Her daughter just did the two paintings. But um, her daughter took on her mother's name, which is Serene. So Serene didn't want to have she didn't want to confuse people and have two Serenes. So 
the daughter is going by Serene Jr. and Serene is going by her name backwards, which is Maris. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, okay. I know. If you had, if, their, right, in, 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 in the idiosyncrasy. So if you had never explained that, so when you. You, if you haven't seen the exhibit yes. until it reappears, so yes. when you do see it again, you'll understand what's going on there. Yes. But I love this, the contrast, oh. the black and the white right here on what they want to see. Yes. And her mask um, are her way of getting out of um, her de- She has depression sometimes. Um. So this is her way of kind of um, recognizing it as okay. well as doing something about it. Right, 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 right. And the black and white is, is like a cool way to do that. The contrast mm-hmm. between, Correct. you know, the darkness Correct. and the light. Correct. And this one I like a lot because it reminds me of what would look like either uh, graffiti mm-hmm. or random different symbols. Right. Um, there's a, um, Brad, you might be able to correct me when I say this. Um, there's something, I think it's called a semi, A-S-C-E-M-I. I'm not sure where it originates from, but when you look it up, it has a very similar pattern. Oh, is it um, a style of writing? Yeah, it's a style of some type Assyrian. of... Assyrian. No, oh, no, 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 no. no. It's, it's like A-S- Like a type, like a font, like a font. Okay. Possibly, but it also seems like it might be old. Like okay. A, like an old style... Okay, of, 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 of writing of script. Yeah. Okay, interesting. But yeah, um, it's A-S-C-E-M-I, and that's what it reminded me of. Cool. Yeah. And actually, it looks like part of her name. Oh, Could have yeah, been. Yeah, right. I didn't see that. Yep, that looks like an S. S and an A and R. The R sideways, right. maybe. There's the I. I and maybe and then that I might even be the a M. 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 Who knows? Or oh, this could be the R, too. That's true. But, yeah. you know, again, yeah. you know, people see what they want to see right. when right. they look at art. Now, this right. one, the right. darkness within. Right. And you see the same thing again. Right. And there's some symbols yeah. alongside. And this is more dark because this is yeah. almost all black. Yes, and I don't want to tell too much of her story, but she uh, also had like suffered abuse, so I wouldn't wow. be surprised if some of the pieces. Right. Okay. So, the, and that's again, you know, because life, art imitates life, and vice versa. Right. Right. And then this last that's, one over yep, here. That's one's hers, and um, it's broken CDs, and I want to say uh, acrylic, and then I think this is clay some sort okay so now we're standing next to this one i first came in ah, i was like oh my yes. gosh he is 21st century yeah. digital boy <laughs> yeah that's from uh my first art show that was just strictly about video games and um i forgot what i called it um it, it was, 21st uh, century digital boy no no oh, the no, show as far as the actual exhibit oh okay yeah, yeah it was done it says at, um, under description the great escape the path to a better world is living in another one where you are the hero Simultaneously, the villain is also you. Either way, you decide your own destiny with little to no consequences unless you lose. Yes. Yes. So that's Josh Outerbacher, um, also a very well-known uh, local artist here in Orlando. He makes these very uh, intricate, um, whimsical uh, characters, but they're also all conceptual. Wow. Uh, I love this frame. This is a beautiful concepts. frame. Yes. Oh, so in that type of frame lines, this might sound weird. So that's also another kind of signature that artists who paint a certain way, Mm -hmm. you'll see that. So he's also from what they call the lowbrow, lowbrow style art, which is, um, it's kind of a mixture of urban pop, pop art, but it's, it's very, it's always very clean, um, has almost a master kind of a touch. Urban, fi- urban fine art and neo pop is, neo what, pop. is with what it would be best described as. Well, thank you for chiming in. Now you guys got to hear the, the voice of Brad. That's right. You'll hear him periodically, but he's going to remain a mystery nonetheless. Yes. <laughs> and we love him and we love him, okay? <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. So, is there anything you would like to say? Mm-hmm. This is just the first of many mm-hmm. that we're going to do. But is there anything else you would like for us to know about Trey? Your journey? <laughs> what you think the um, future holds? What you think the future holds for the Orlando, the Orlando art scene and even our mystery guest who doesn't want to be? I'll say something about Trey. Okay. Trey is a skilled art 
art promoter and, and uh, a curator in his own right. Some he may be my protege, and, <laughs> and I did start the initial training, but he has he has give, breathed new life into his own interpretation of it. I'm exceptionally proud of him when he does it. <laughs> and so, would you care to comment on where you think the future of art is in Orlando? You probably don't want my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Why, <more> not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? You've piqued our interest and right. you have less Listen than Denali, huh? a two-minute, two-minute version. Mm. Or less. Probably not. Probably not possible. Orlando has what I would refer to as the three steps forward, five steps back syndrome. It, uh, you have some new places, they open within two years, occasionally three, they are gone, they've closed up. You have promoters that will come in with big budgets, very flashy, and they burn out and disappear. And why do you think that is? Why do I think that is? Mm -hmm. They got too greedy, too ambitious, weren't willing to work from the idea of of building it in a, in a compound way. Built one building block on At a time, another, right. Being collaborative, another. talking to people who know what's going on and thinking they can reinvent the wheel. That's part of it, but it's, but it's the fact that, the, that, that these people basically were very charismatic and very good about getting large money sponsors at times. And these sponsors will never do it again because they see their money is wasted. And that's a pity. And that makes it harder for the rest of us. Yes, it does. I know how to fundraise, but how many other people who work in the arts actually know how? And so we know art is a business. And so you have to be conversing in different parts of a business. It's like you run a business. Yeah. I mean, very open minded. Yes. To work in the business, you, you, you are not just doing one thing. You have to you have to be multi talented. You have to be talented at publicity. You have to be talented at speaking about the artwork. You have to have a certain amount of art education. You have to be able to explain sometimes explain to artists themselves what their artwork is or how it would be best described. And you also have got to be able to tune out the, the stupid noise. And there you have it, people. A twofer. How lucky were we that we got the 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 one and the only Brad to chime in? So again, you're being sarcastic, but I'm. I am that not matter. being sarcastic. I, 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 you been, you been, you been, have been, been around, around and you are you are probably one of the few people that really knows the lay of the land when it comes to mm -hmm. the Orlando art scene. Yeah, that's how I learned. Exactly, and so I mean. I tell people all the time, you know, how fortunate I am mm -hmm. to know people like Brad, like you, and all the artists that I've met through you, either you, Brad, or you, Trey, because it, it's like a, a snowball. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I come to a showing or I go to an exhibit and people think I know everybody. And mm -hmm. the people I know are because of people like you that I've met them. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's like the ripple effect. You throw a stone in the pond and it ripples outward. So. Actually, think of a Japanese Zen stone garden. But then, but, but by that standard, you throw, you throw a stone in and you have the ripples. The problem is, is that, are you who's paying attention to the white ripples? That's true. Oh, wow. The flashy ones are, 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 are the ones that, are, that actually have value. And a lot of people that work in the arts cannot differentiate between. And there you have it, people. So we are running out of time. We will meet again, and we will talk with Trey, and, and possibly Brad will chime in as he has on this episode. But again, I want to thank both of you. Thank you. And thank you. And hopefully you'll come and check out Favo, people. Please do so. Yes, yes. All righty. Bye. Bye. <laughs> nice. <laughs>